trying to. Okay. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rob Potter from uh, the promiserevealed.net. Have a, a special guest on today. And uh, we're going to go over a couple different things here. First, we're going to do a little thing about the conference, but I want to introduce you to an old friend of mine who was definitely part of my ET 101 in 19, uh, in the late 70s, uh, when I was hanging out with Fred Bell and uh, learning about Gabriel Green, Michael L. Legion, and some of the old school contactees who have been very instrumental in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Frank Shelley. Well, he should be a doctor. You're, you're very kind, Rob. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be with you and to be able to share again. So, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Chili's uh, quite heavily connected uh, on the inner planes to the Venusians and the uh, the mission of the brothers, as we call them, from outer space, the brothers and sisters, to be clear. And um, let's just say um, he's been uh, at the forefront of a lot of the amazing experiences and revelations. He was very close with George Van Tassel. He was the first person on the property at the Tegretong in uh, Giant Rock after he passed away. And um, he was there when um, his wife, uh, uh, Doris, I believe it was. Yes. Yeah, she told him, uh, you know, we may have a visitor tonight. Don't get up or anything. And sure enough, uh, um, they came and he can maybe talk about that. But he also introduced me uh, to Dr. William Tompkins, and we'll be talking a little bit about some of that technology tonight. That was a person that I introduced to Michael Sala, who revealed the information um, in his books. Um, and Michael Sala is a good writer working within the area of understanding and disclosure there. But before I do that, folks, I want to share with you my my uh, website here real quick, because uh, uh Frank is coming to my conference. We're almost completely down. You get to the website, this is what you see. You're going to click on this banner here. Um, I got a lot of new stuff coming up very soon. So this is like a site within a website. You see here, these are the names. We have Raymond Keller, Vivian Chavez, myself, the famous Louis Martens from South America, a very special uh, gentleman from Senegal. Uh, he's got about six degrees, speaks nine languages and uh, 12 instruments or the other way around. Brad Olson, Alex Collier's coming. He will not be presenting. He will be answering questions. Uh, Deborah Gusti, Ra Octuris, uh, Lily Nova, a newcomer on the scenes who's establishing her own contacts. Uh, and we'll talk about her developing contacts. Ruko Blue Star, the amazing, sensitive from Mount Shasta, incredible artist who plays flute like an angel. Jane uh, Masteller, uh, a wonderful astrologer who's always has great insights. And Dr. Scott and Vicki Werner will be here. Here's Frank Chili. Dennis Adams, one of the local guys, a great healer. Another amazing guy, Hans Dietrich. He's another new one this year. He's got information on uh, connections to Tibet. These two people, twin rays, <clears throat> are kind of a spiritually oriented group. Um uh, they they have, you know, they dress in robes and stuff. They're kind of in the Eastern tradition. Uh, after talking to them, um, I found out that he ha has also met Babaji, the Mahavatar Babaji, who was uh, working with uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, Hari Mahesa, Sri Yukteswar, uh, of course, a famous uh, a contactee from Santa Barbara, um, Norm Paulson. Uh, and I've had contact. So um, we talked a little bit. He's had some extraterrestrial experiences. He doesn't focus on that. Richard Miller, an incredible physicist, scientist, a heavy top secret clearance of the government. He has a lot of technologies he wants to share. When you look at his bio, you're going to blow his mind, your mind. This is Higme Risen. He re requests to remain anonymous. He's very well connected and having extraterrestrial contacts. He too will be sharing his videos, endless videos of spaceships and his experience. And of course, Lori and Fenton. Uh, we need volunteers. So we're going to check it out. I'm going to send you straight to speakers here just for a second, because I'm going to read Frank Chili's biography. And there's the, there's the good doctor, the doctor of love. And he has been a self-proclaimed seeker of arcane knowledge for the past 45 years. He's a student of health, metaphysics, ancient civilizations, comparative religions, as knowledge of mostly 
unknown contactee experiences from individuals he has met along his life path. Frank was a close associate to Dr. or to William Tompkins, an insider to advanced technology, has had firsthand exposure to technology products, and has traveled extensively throughout the U.S. and has lived abroad. Frank has spoken publicly and conducted seminars on diverse subjects on both coasts, as well as for the military, on subjects including energy studies and lighting effects on health. He's done many radio programs and functioned as a producer for Jeff Rents in the past eight years and has been interviewed on Gaia TV. Ad additionally, has trained individuals' marketing teams and has conducted forensic corporate accounting for Fortune 100 firms in three states. He managed a firm with a unique product for transportation and heavy equipment markets. So um, that's the summer conference, folks. And again, if you... Um, wanted to uh, check out my website here. Everything about the conference is up on that page I showed you. We have lots of good stuff here. You want to check out those tickets. The prices will be going up. We have some uh, amazing stuff there. So I'd like to just get right into this interview with my dear friend, Frank uh, Chile. He is very positive, very um, enthusiastic when talking about the brothers. He was telling me, oh my God, Rob, this and that, and this and that. And I was learning things and I was like, yeah, that's great. I'm looking for closer contact myself. And um, it was actually through a Frank that introduced me to Raymond Keller, which led to my um, other experiences with the Venusians and Dr. Uh, or, uh, Raymond Keller's direct intervention to allow me to have a physical face-to-face -face meeting and recording with the Venusians. Frank Chile, how are you doing today? I'm doing real good, Rob. Uh, again, it's an honor and joy to be with you and with your audience. Uh, I only have one correction. Uh, you had mentioned about uh, George Van Tassel. I didn't get a chance to meet him while he was alive. I happened to get out there about six months after he had passed. But uh, I did have experiences there at the Integratron and, uh, of course, at Giant Rock. Uh, yeah. But I just wanted to offer that one correction. Okay, thank you. I didn't know. I figured you had. I figured you must have been hanging out with him like you were with Gabe. Well, I was hanging out with Gabe and uh, Daniel Boone and Sly Winkler and, you know, uh, um, uh, Reverend, um, oh my gosh, Blue Rose Ministry. Yeah, Bob Short, yeah. Bob Short, yes, Reverend Bob Short. Yeah. But uh, a lot of experiences out there, Rob. And, and you know, uh, they were just wondrous times, just wondrous days. And everybody was really innocent and unique and and uh, open to uh, the, the new disclosure that was coming to us by these early pioneers who had participated out of Giant Rock. And Gabe was like the focal point out in uh, Yucca Valley. We'd go out there and spend long, long weekends with him. He certainly was. I mean, I would, uh, you know, he, he had that kind of way of talking, a kind of a tall drop of water. And uh, he yes. showed me in some very rapid, short visits um, um, through a talk with him. Um, um, I understood uh, a lot about how they monitor all the phenomenon that would occur in his house. Uh, a yes. television would turn on in the other room and um, a picture would tilt or a popping noise. And he said, oh, they're just agreeing with you. They're letting you know they're here. So they were actually monitoring our conversations. Then yes. um, I was with Michael a Legion and I said, well, what do they wear when they're here? He says, oh, they love to wear the 50s. And then I had my experience with Don Thor. Michael a Legion didn't recognize them, but uh, that was my first encounter with a uh, a Venusian uh, team coming down to visit me and say hello, kind of behind the scenes. Um, he had uh, he invited me out <clears throat> when uh, Master Hilarion sent a teacher, and then I, I, a, a spiritual government guy who broke his mind control was on the run, a wall from the government. Um, taught me many things about the Greys and uh, the kind of the dark side, and then the uh, spaceship landed in front of me. Gabriel Green and Michael uh, Legion and Michael, the, his memory has been wiped. He didn't even remember it, I don't think. But um, Gabe was uh, a tremendously powerful spiritual person. He told you and me many great stories. So um, let's hear. And his house was loaded with uh, crystals. You remember he had crystals all over his house. Yes. And you're right. We flashed the lights whenever we would talk about a subject that they would validate that it was true. He had a big torch lamp in the living room, and it would go on and off. 
Yeah, that this is ET 101, folks, so you understand the responsibility that they have. They can see everything and know everything you do. Uh, you're not doing anything really private. In your personal life, they, they won't monitor you, but they are watching, they are observing, and they're looking for good-hearted souls. So uh, let's see, you've introduced uh, William Tompkins to the world. Uh, to me, I introduced him to Sala. You introduced Frank to me, or to Raymond to me. We, he's become my closest mentor, guide, and friend. And how's he doing? Uh, how's uh, Brother Ray doing? Raymond's amazing. He's finishing up his 11th book. He's got his biography oh, to go. One more on Dr. Frank, 12, 13. Yes. And he's going to edit my book when it's finished, God willing, inshallah. So, hey, let's let's get into you. You've got so much information. You, you, you Albert Coe, I think we talked about him on one of our previous interviews. What yes. is the latest going on for you? In terms of contact, what are you getting? I know a lot of your information comes in your uh, out-of-body lucid dreaming state. So why don't you share with us what's the latest going on? Well, it's interesting. Dr. Michael Sala did an expose regarding the Nordic assimilation into uh, society here on Earth. And uh, it's an incredible interview with this fellow by the name of JP. He's in special operations. Uh, he doesn't identify what branch of special operations he's in. But he said these visitors come down, a lot of them from the Pleiades, and they're in cigar-shaped craft, and the craft is hovering above the Earth, and the beings come out, and they're transported onto helicopters, and they're taken to different areas to do work all around the planet. And it's interesting, uh, a mutual friend of ours, Andrea Martin, had uh, a long discussion with Sim Simyasi, and this is before she saw the Michael Sala interview. And Simyasi validated what Michael Sala was told by this fellow JP about the uh, civilization of the Nordics into our society, that they're going, they're being planted in here so that people will know at some point in the very near future that Nordics and intergalactics are living amongst us. And uh, if you haven't seen that interview with uh, Sala and JP, I really strongly recommend it because Simyasi validated all that information to Andrea. And yeah, if you I talk to Andrea again, I, I have. If you talk to Andrew, not yet about that, but I have. Uh, I have uh, uh, seen Michael Sala and JP, so um, you know I have seen some of that information. And uh, last I checked in with him, he had been uh, threatened. They put a, a, a frequency wave on him, and he wasn't really uh, that happy about it. And I wasn't sure if he was going to stay in there, but. Um, yeah, Michael Sala's uh, information is uh, is incredible. Uh, there's a lot Dan of Willis, information. Uh, oh, so sorry. Years, I, he I had coming on here without my permission. Experience level so fourteen. Been, where he get can out of here. Sensitive gonna, material. I was trying to pull it up and see if I could just show it to people, but it automatically plays. So, um, so was, uh, that, was that within the last two weeks, Rob? About JP shutting down? No, it was before that. But he may have. Uh, I don't know if he's still working in the program or not. I mean, I, I don't want to say things I don't know. So let's yes. just say that um, um, JP is an insider. From the way he talks, I get the feeling Marine or uh, or, or Army guy. I think he's more I think there's a Navy connection somewhere in there. It could be Marines. Yeah, maybe, but, maybe, uh, maybe a Navy he guy. Was told, he was told by his, his uh, superiors he could start talking about this, but there are certain aspects of the integration and disclosure he still can't talk about yet. Of but course, he said not. everything is positive. Everything is positive. As we know, the Venusians have many thousands of representatives living and walking and talking amongst us. They come and yeah. go. You'll never catch them, Mr. Government, because they monitor everyone's thoughts. They can disappear in an instant. So they're here sure. to let people know when the time comes. They're going to be neighbors of people for years. You're an yes. E.C. Well, yeah, sorry about that. I am. So it's not about wanting to prove who they are or to do any technologies, right? It's about just sharing the 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 peace and the kindness and and everything they, they they're doing is is here. What do you think their primary mission is mostly? The Venusians. It's part of part of the integration, working with the Pleiadians and with other uh, star friends from other constellations, in and rejoining us with the uh, our cosmic family, and that's been their directive. And from what I'm I'm hearing from other contactees that don't know each other, Rob, they're mm -hmm. all telling me the same thing. Expect some extraordinarily positive information to come out this early spring or late spring of this year. 
very positive information. And it's all the groundwork is being laid. And uh, what's really exceptional is that um, you had mentioned Bill Tompkins and uh, Dr. Bob Wood told me that volume four is probably going to be released of selected by extraterrestrials within the next 30 days or so. Is, that by, new- is that by Bob Wood or William Tompkins? Well, it's William Tompkins' work that uh, Bob Wood is editing and uh, going to be releasing as volume four. And Post, I asked him, I said, posthumously for, for, yes, for, yes, posthumously. That's right. But there's new information. Bob Wood told me that he came across that Bill Tompkins had set aside specifically to be found, to be incorporated into uh, future works. And uh, if you could bring up that, the cover of his third volume, there's something I want to share with you and your audience. Okay, let me pull that up here. Um, Take your time. Yeah, I had that up here. And where did that go? That's a that's a good that's a good question there. <laughs> here we go. Uh, there, no, here it is. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my screen share, folks. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go back to uh, Jeff Rents, where um, Frank has worked a lot on working with Jeff Rents. Jeff Rents is a, a kind of a maverick a whistleblower. Um, who works uh, in extraterrestrial disclosure through Frank, um, working with him as a producer and other things. So so uh, this information was given by Bob Woods and William Tompkins to Frank Chile in order to share and to explain the importance of the extraterrestrials, um, the Nordic secretaries, of course, who were working with him. Uh, this is a typical example of extraterrestrials. If you could stop right there, uh, Rob, and okay. can you make that? The back cover larger. I want to draw attention to two of the uh, design the illustrations. The no, the second the back cover. That's it. Make it larger. I want people to be able to see the uh, design of the uh, work that Bill had done. Can you make it a little larger? I'm going to try. We'll see how much more we can go here. I if think- you can make it full screen, it, it would be good. If if that's the best you could do, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Let me. Uh, That's get... pretty good. All right. Now these are two, two designs that Bill had provided to Dr. Bob Wood and Dr. Uh, Michael Sala of seventeen that he had created for the control panels, the control rooms of the Solar Warden craft. Okay. Now, uh, if you get the book, there's large images of them, and I would suggest people take a look at it and look at the detail. I've been told by people who told me that they're part of the Solar Warden program and the control panels of the craft, the Solar Warden craft, look exactly as Bill had designed. And I think that's really extraordinary. And Bob said that he had presented 17 unique drawings that had never been seen before, but he only had access to two of them. I'm hoping he has found more of them that will be in volume four. But again, these are designs that Bill had created to be utilized into the solar warden craft that he designed to interact with the Nordic Navy and uh, the Nordic Navy and uh, our solar warden people are working closely together. And one of the stories that uh, Bill shares that was for the first time in this book is that uh, one of the engineers at uh, Douglas Aircraft needed to go to Seattle, Washington, and they were in uh, Long Beach, California. And uh, the engineer left Long Beach went to Santa Monica and is going up Route 5. And as he's going up Route 5, he hears this voice in his head that said, uh, we're here, Uh, we have the coffee ready for you, why don't you come and visit with us? So this guy is driving along Route 5, and he can't believe what he heard. So he goes up a little further on Route 5, and he's he's, uh, probably above San Jose, and he sees a ramp off of... uh, a five that led into a wooded area and he turns off and starts driving into this uh, dirt road and they said come on further back we're here waiting for you so he drives to the end of this dirt road and he said it's wooded area all around him he said when he gets to the end of the dirt road he said there's a craft there a disc and he said it's probably like 300 feet in diameter and he sees a ram come down and he hears the voice say the coffee's ready for you and it's hot. Come on board. So this engineer goes on board the craft and he meets <laughs> members. He meets members of the Nordic Navy. And he said, 
there's Solar Warden people and Nordic Navy people that are working together. But this group of Nordic Navy people are separate, but they're... they're uh, Hold on a second. Let me be clear. The Nordics don't have a Navy. They're working with the U.S. Navy, you mean? Yes. and But but they all have their own fleet. They have their own fleet. But there were two separate groups. This one group that this engineer met, they, the, the beings looked all just like us. They were probably five six to maybe six two in height. And he said they were wearing all one-piece outfits, all blue. And he invited them on board the craft. And he gave them a tour of the craft and gave them a, a cup of coffee. And he said it just blew his mind. He said he had heard stories about this, but he experienced this for the very first time. And he shared it with Bill when he came back from Seattle. And Bill just chuckled because he said they're here. And a lot of people don't realize that they're here. And when he received an offer like that, the guy followed his instinct and he had a wonderful experience meeting the visitors. And he said they looked extremely just like us. All they'd have to do is take off their their uh, one piece suits and put on earth clothes and yeah. he'd look they'd fit right into society. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And Thank in you. this book, one of the things that Bill revealed was that uh, when he was working at TRW, they achieved the ability of creating micro miniaturization. Right. And I said to Bill, I said, Micro miniaturization, I said, how small was that? And he said, Frank, he said, we created in the early 70s the technology so that the inner aspect of the working mechanisms would be invisible. And I said, what? And he said, the, the, the circuitry would be so small, would be invisible. Now, he achieved this in the early 70s. When this book came out and we had Dr. Wood on uh, the program with Jeff, uh, I went on the internet, and if you scroll down, you'll see some incredible photos. These are that's these are new phones that are coming out by Sony and Samsung that employ micro miniaturization. All the mechanisms for a smartphone is in that phone, but it's transparent. Yeah, this you is scroll up. Yeah, this is like the smart dust they created. Some of that has been used for. Uh, nefarious purposes. So I want, I'd like to go back to that uh, encounter aboard the ship. So he got a, a, how long was he on board was the tour. And uh, so there were positive secret space program members, as well as Nordic uh, working with them. No, the, there's our U S Navy working with Nordics as part of solar warden. And, and there's also a Nordic Navy or a Nordic fleet. That's also working uh, basically on our own agenda, but for the positive upliftment of the and planet. And the Nordics are from where? The Pleiades. These are from, they're all from different areas. Some are from the Pleiades, some are from Arcturus, some are from Venus, uh, but okay. they're from many different areas. And they're, they're We shouldn't really all call different. them Nordic because they're going to have many different looks then, right? Of course, yes. Okay. But most of them do look almost entirely like us. And some of them are black, some are brown, some are, are uh, yellow-skinned. And uh, some are uh, Egyptian looking, some are uh, Asian looking. But scroll this up a little bit more. You'll see more photographs of this. Look at that. Again, that is a smartphone where the circuitry is so small that it's transparent. And Bill said they achieved that in like 72 and 73 with TRW. And it's finally being released now. Scroll up a little more. It'll be coming out soon, huh? Yep. I mean, isn't that remarkable technology? And they've had that. Rob, when you think about it, they've had this for 50 years and are just getting ready to release this to the public now. Of course. So this this is one of the reasons people will, when they understand these type of things, they realize that their governments really have nothing to offer them other than, uh, you know, lies. And this is all going to be changed. So very exciting. So you see the apps on there? Isn't that great? You see the apps right on it, but everything's transparent. Yeah, I hope. It's going to blow people's minds. Yeah, I mean, that's just like the the engine and the plane and all that this is fantastic uh, yes so, uh, but it's a, but it's a validation you could just stop there it's yeah. a validation of of the technology that bill was working on it's coming to fruition now and, and the people will be learning about it now bob wood made another comment to jeff and i that i thought was really remarkable he said uh bill tompkins may not be gone and i said to him what do you mean by that and he said, I think he may have been asked to come inside and work at a clandestine level. And 
they had developed the technology for, you know, the 20 and back uh, solar warden people where rejuvenated you, uh, men above the age right, of 35. So he's been given a new young body. Well, he's been given the uh, product that Genentech is going to be introducing to the public. They have 20,000 world patents. They have 157 world patents on extending the telomere gene. As we age, the telomere gene recedes. They've created a tablet, I've been told by insiders, that works within 30 days of taking it. Again, men above the age of 35 rejuvenates them to between 33 to 35 years of age. Women above the age of 25 rejuvenates them to between 23 to 25 years of age. How about, that, three age 80s, how about age 66? Yeah, if you're above the age of 35, it rejuvenates you to between 33 to 35. Oh. But only three things nullify it. Drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. They're the three things that nullify it. But Genentech is going to be coming public with this. And it's something that Tompkins had worked on back in, in the 70s also at TRW. And they've been using it. The Navy's been using it. And other uh, members of uh, you know the government have been using this for a long period of time. So it's uh, another revelation is going to be coming public. So, so uh, Bob Woodward says he knows this for a fact or? No, he strongly suspects it. He strong, strongly suspects it. And I told him of an incident that I had about a month and a half after Bill passed. I got a text on my phone from Bill's phone. And Bill's phone only was used by Bill, and his wife does not text. She's 96 years of age. Good. She had his phone, and I got two text messages from him, like he, he's letting me know that he's here. And okay. I shared that with Bob, and Bob was astounded by it. He said, Frank, did that really happen to you? I said, yes. And I said, somebody who had gone to the funeral for Bill Tompkins was in the church that the uh, coffin was in, and he, this fellow who's very clairvoyant, he heard Bill laughing and he heard Bill say, they think I'm in that box. I'm not in that box. Well, I think that's the reason that I can't send you emails. You can't get texts. You can't make a phone call. Uh, you're locked up tighter than, a, a, you know, some kind of thing. They, they, they blocked our communication quite frequently, folks, whoever they are. And, um, we have nothing but love to share. We're not uh, hiding any government secrets. We're, we're giving you. Yes, not at all. Not at all. We're giving everyone hope and understanding of what is we're looking forward to. The lies and the corruption of this cover-up, which is, I always felt uh, there was uh, Winfrey Bromwell, a friend of Gabe's, wrote a book called UFOs, The Keys to Earth's Destiny. And I really do feel like. Um, I, I really took that to heart when I was young. I was in my 18 or 19. I was really feeling like you, these extraterrestrials are definitely the key to Earth's destiny, not only because they're the only ones that could overcome the negative forces that are here doing nefarious work, but uh, because um, they can guide us very quickly from you know a crazy Earth to a, a happy, healthy earth if we can uh, move forward. And that's where we're going here. So I wanted to get a little more clarity. So the guy, when he went on board a spaceship, were there solar warden members and? No, uh, it was just just the Nordics, just the Nordics, the visitors yeah. themselves to look like us. There were no earth beings on there, but he okay, said good. they could pass for earth beings. They could that's, pass for it. That's what I wanted to say. Now, I do know there is positive uh, uh solar warden individuals but there's a lot of the secret space program that is still running along the waste of space program the negative agenda now i know that the jp guy and many of the others on there are under a mind control when jp reported going to jupiter and to some of the moons around ganymede there that um a lot of these guys that are in these programs probably did have their memories wiped jp for some reason has been chosen or maybe it's more widespread than i think but um jp is like a reporter so he's allowed to remember things and talk about positive things to come um it seems as though from the other reports of jp and michael sala would you agree i'm ask you this um they're talking about uh, the inner earth with the ant people and some of these other uh, things it seems that the government is still trying to hoard the technology and information that they're giving freely to them in order to help mankind. And they're trying to subvert it, aren't they? 
Uh, the, yes, they have, and and they are. But I've been told that part of the disclosure is going to be the inner earth beings are going to reveal themselves, that the our star friends are going to reveal themselves openly, and, and Bigfoot is going to openly come forward and interact with us. And I think I mentioned to you that I was no. recently introduced to uh, a filmmaker who made uh, two documentaries on Bigfoot that are very positive. And I had a chance to share some information with him that he validated regarding how they use trees as portals. And he said, yes, he's been told. That's how they move from one place to another almost immediately, that the trees are actually portals. And uh, he told me that uh, he has met other individuals who are in contact with them. And I told him there's two girls that I know, one who lives in Western Pennsylvania and one who lives uh, above Trenton, who are in contact with our our uh, Bigfoot friends. And the one in uh, Western Pennsylvania, she lives na next to a national forest. It's uh, uh, that this film producer, Brett, told me has a lot of activity with Bigfoot. This one girl, her name is Kathleen. She has met members of a Bigfoot family, a male, a female, and a child, and the uncle to the family. And she said she's been able to interact with them and draw them. And she said their facial features are so similar to us the, the women are between seven to eight feet tall. The men are about nine feet tall. And she said they've allowed her to make sketches of them. And uh, she says they're very loving and affectionate people. She communicates with them mentally. And she said they some of them have the ability of being able to vocalize as we do. And she said they're nothing but very loving and kind beings. And they can't wait to introduce themselves to society without any fear and without any repercussions. I think this is important. Dr. Frank Strange has also said um, that he feels that um, the he felt that the uh, the inner earth is going to open up uh, to, to take people inside at a uh, time of the cataclysm. And I do think that it does make sense that we be introduced to the inner earth civilizations before we actually meet the extraterrestrials formally. Although, as you and I know, they both work closely together. Sure. Um, and of course, it needs to be made clear that there was a fallen extraterrestrial group with inside the Earth that held a tremendous amount of sway for the last 16,000 years. And they have kind of been responsible for our accelerated uh, path to somewhere in a handbasket. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's being removed now, according to uh, JP, Elena, uh, um, the Venusians and other sources, uh, especially Ground Command, Kim Gogan. Um, yes. So this is exciting. Uh, so how Can I hear something else with you? Sure. I, I, there's a fellow that I've known for a while, and he's got a really good contact in Northern Virginia. And he said, Frank, I contacted this person who has tremendous integrity. And he said, I'm very concerned that we're at the edge where somebody, some madman, could force us into a conflict. And this person, who he wouldn't identify who the person was, but he said he knows that this person has incredible integrity. And he said, "This my friend's name is James. And he said, James, do not worry about any of that. It's not going to get out of control. No he, said, we have the, he said, we have the ability of locking down the entire power structure of any nation, whether it's Russia, China, or whatever. And he said, you know what our biggest problem is? And he says, I'm being very, very uh, open with you, James. The average human. Pardon? The average human's understanding level. Well, he said that our biggest problem is that the time is short for a lot of disclosure. And he said, right. it's true that we're in excess of a thousand years of what the public knows. He said, we're going to begin a crash course of increasing the public's awareness of things within a two to three hundred years two to 300 year period at a time. Now it's going to take that long, but they said they're going to use social media, uh, mass media. They're going to use um, films. They're going to use television to get people aware that our technology is greater than the public understands. And they're hoping to do this in three phases. Each phase is going to be a two to 300 year in advance of what our technology is. Right. And, yeah. and he it with me. I do believe that's important. Um, I'm working with a, uh... Uh, the global intelligence agency I'm, I'm working on we're going to be exposing some things in terms of the control group and what they're doing and how they've run it 
behind the scenes because people need real evidence of what's taking place and who these people are who sold out the planet and what the agenda has been given to them to do in order for them to sell out humanity and maintain positions of power and greed. And there's not about, this is not about revenge. This is about revelations moving forward so that humanity can begin to as sovereign beings, and you are sovereign beings, ladies and gentlemen, now begin to create free associations, and we can pretty much ignore the government and what they're telling us to do. And I mean ignore them. They have nothing to offer. Everything they tell you is a lie. Um, but uh, Frank has so many wonderful uh, stories. Um, um, why don't you tell us a little bit more? Uh, I think uh, the the Bigfoot. Well, I wanted to share with you. I wanted to share with you a little bit of information regarding what Dr. Serfati is coming out with, and this is really extraordinary. He's coming forward now, admitting that the craft has consciousness, that the craft is alive. Okay, that the star our star friends are using. He's validating Philip Corso's work that he was tasked with planning the technology with corporations around the United States. So they could patent the technology that came out of Roswell. So there would be a patent history. And he said, Corso was indeed correct that most of the technology that we've had over the last 60 to 70 years was a was direct outcropping of Roswell. For Surfati to come forward with this and to say that the craft have consciousness and awareness is a big step. And I've been told he's going to be part of the disclosure saying that the technology exists, that the beings have the ability of being able to utilize physics above what we know. And that they're not here for nefarious purposes. They're here for positive purposes. And he said he's working with branches of the intelligence agency that are going to be revealing the true aspect of what it is that we're going to be told. Yeah, a lot of these scientists who have been held under a thumb thinking they're helping their government and sworn to secrecy under threat of a fulfillment of a contract on their own life are ready to come out. And yes. those individuals who are working in that level, you can contact me. I can get you in touch of the Global Intelligence Agency and you'll be offered protection. So um, I just uh, arranged that for, uh, I'm in the process of arranging that um, right now uh, for uh, some good people who have a lot of good things to help and, and you can get it to the people. Be prepared, ladies and gentlemen. You'll be able to um, make great strides moving forward as this information comes out. It's gonna it's gonna take a lot for people to grasp this, Frank. What do you think is one of the most? It's going to be a major. It's going to be a major crash course on on consciousness. You know, it was Serfati who came forward with the uh, concept of utilizing uh, thought propulsion, which is faster than light, which the contactees had told us a long time ago about it. Dr. Serfati came out with 24 pages of equations that link metallurgy with awareness and consciousness. And I reached out to him and I said, Dr. Serfati, you know, he's had his own experience with craft and with the beings. And he said, everything that they told him has come to be. And I said to him, Dr. Serfati, could this be the methodology that the visitors are utilizing to traverse vast distances to come here? He said, absolutely. He said, we could back engineer what they have. He said, we're not yet at the point where we could align atoms the way that they do. But he said, we're working on it. Now, that is a major thing to come forward with. You could think of the furthest place in the universe and be there. Nothing will stop you. Right. What, what are the, all, go ahead. Yeah, one of Dr. Fred Bell said that when he went up, they showed him, see, that the ships are living matter. Yes, yes. Night. So uh, the Venusians, what they do is they, they're spaceships in outer space. They grow these giant mushrooms. And what are mushrooms? Mushrooms are antennas into the frequency of the earth. They're very connected. The largest being on the planet would be a mycelium, uh, a, a large underground network of, of mushroom spores. So it's one of the largest and most intelligent uh, uh, beings on the planet. And the Pleiadians grow the ships out in outer space because the Pleiadian ships are sound powered and light separated. And this is in Dr. Fred Bell's book, Rays of Truth and Crystals of Light. And he said that the mushrooms, they grow in outer space at a certain point because of the chordal chambers in their resonance, they inject them with a liquid metal. And this liquid metal is keyed into the auric signature of the captain of the ship. So only the captain 
or their co-captains are allowed to access the the drive of the ship. In fact, uh, one of the necklaces that we have, the Pleiadians, a little disc that I usually wear, did without the diamond. That is what Semyasi uh, would put her hand over when Fred Bell went on board the ship. There was this disc, and Pat Flanagan had a similar Fibonacci type disc that that would key to his signature, and he was able to uh, uh, pilot the ship through telepathic communication uh, with the ship. So these ships are literally living beings, and uh, this technology is just around the corner. However, yes. again, the Venusians warn us, our emotional and spiritual development must increase for us to take full advantage of this because some of these technologies, of course, as we have witnessed from our, our unfortunately fallen brothers who have sided with the dark side have been using it against us. So this is no longer allowed. Anyone who chooses to violate these principles will find themselves on the other side of life is what I'm told. So um, how do you see this, this new disclosure coming forward, Brother Frank? Uh, I believe it's going to be occurring on a multifaceted basis that a lot of the contactees that, again, I've been talking to that don't know each other are saying, Frank, the, the green light has been given for all this to come forward and the public has to be made aware of it and they can't hold back the dawn anymore. No. Uh, I was going to mention to you a fellow that I met in the late 70s when I when I first moved to California was Bill Hamilton. And Bill told me, he said, Frank, there's something unique about the star visitor craft. He said it's orga organic technology. You could grow it and, and, and collapse it as needed. And he said, more, more of this is going to be revealed. Well, in Bill Tompkins' uh, book regarding that engineer who saw the craft landed off of uh, Route 5 or uh, Interstate 5, he said from the outside, the craft looked to be about 300 feet in diameter. When he got inside of it, he said it looked enormous. And again, that's another example of a craft looking one way from the outside of the ship. And that's, when you're inside it's of it. still 100 yards in diameter. That's not a small craft. So. No, no. But he said it looked much, much larger inside when he got in, when they brought him around the ship. And uh, other people have said the same thing, too. When they've been on board a craft, even um, who was the uh, the engineer out of the White Sands? Uh, Dan Fry. Oh, my God. Dan Fry. Dan, Dan, Dan Fry. Fry. When he was brought aboard a launch ship, it was like maybe 30 feet in diameter. But when he was inside of it, he said it seemed a lot more than 30 feet in diameter. Hmm. So that technology has existed in the early contactees have reported it, but a lot of people couldn't wrap their head around it because it's a concept that we're not familiar with. How can something be larger on the inside than it is on the outside? Yeah, th these are interesting aspects of uh, interdimensionality, which we can only guess at. And a yes. late person may come up with his own conclusions, which could be <laughs> completely off. <laughs> yes. And you were mentioning before Bigfoot, there's a program on the Discovery Channel called uh, uh, Expedition Bigfoot. And they had this one researcher who happened to contact someone from the aerospace industry. And he didn't say who he worked for, but I had the feeling it was Boeing. And he said one of the engineers that he worked with was having uh, a get together at his house. And uh, it's like an open house party. So there was about 15 or 16 engineers from this aerospace company. And they noticed, he said, there was an elderly man that was there, that there was a lot of activity around him and a lot of interest. And this fellow said to his friend, who's an engineer, he said, what's all that about? What's that guy drawing so much interest for? And the guy who's having the house party said, that's my uncle. He said, he's showing people pictures of Bigfoot that our government is working with and interacting with them. And he said, go over and take a look at them. They're crystal clear. And the guy went over and he saw the photographs that the uncle had and he described them. And he said, they were like they were standing next to them and men and women and, and uh, a child like uh, Bigfoot. There were six, seven feet. The, the children are like six or seven feet. And he said, the uncle said, our government's been working with them for a long period of time. And it blew everybody's mind at this uh, at this uh, gathering. But the engineer's uncle told him he had the, the green light to go ahead and start sharing photographs that were communicating with Bigfoot and getting ready to introduce their presence to the planet. 
It's yeah. amazing stuff. I can feel that. It's it's like a multi pronged attack, and everyone's yes. compartmentalized. You know, you know, yes. I have the mission contacts. You have your contacts. Raymond has his. Everyone's got a, is approaching from a different level. You know, I had I had asked Alon. I said, why don't you take us all up on the ship so everyone can stop arguing about who's right or who's wrong? I I just I really hate to see that in the movement. Certain people saying yes. oh, that person doesn't know what they're talking about, and. You know, when a lot you, of sniping, a lot of sniping, Rob. I mean, even the munch contactees, some who sure. are at the top and are jealous of other people copying them or something. It's happened with some major people I know, and they are yes. real contactees. But you know, everyone's got a little piece of the puzzle. Not everyone is, is as accurate as everyone else. Some people right. exaggerate their experiences, unknowingly make mistakes. So yeah. uh, always take everything, including from no matter who it is. You know, um, at what level contact and always, you know, with a lot of thought, keep, with a lot keep of an thought. open door, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, you know, I, I find that when I meet people, if I'm non judgmental and uh, I don't have an attitude to, of uh, knowing everything, that if you're uh, receptive and open to listening, they'll share the most incredible things with you, Rob. They really will. Hey, Frank, while we're here, let's, I want to just uh, tell me, why don't we go over some of these other ones? I think we kind of scared some people there, but explain about this image. Well, that was something that Bill Tompkins had said that when he was working with the, um, he was working with uh, Kurt Debus and yeah. the German engineers that came over from Paperclip. Yeah. He said that when he went to visit their facility in Huntsville, Alabama, he said all the German scientists were staying in this one uh, area and the flag that they had over their area was this flag right I mean, the nazis have taken over yeah we know that and i yeah. have a better picture of this i have the original given to me by a guy who worked inside this ship he was one of the engineers and that yes. looks, that's the venusian craft right there uh, now these are these uh, how many photos are there rob do you see many i see two right there this is a government uh i think this is called the uss los angeles um and that other one there, I, I can show you that the original. So this okay. is the family, the sea cadets. You, that's it. Yeah, uh, that was the ones that were out of Medford, Oregon. And Bill told me that he said the parents of uh, children that the parents ultimately wanted them to go into the Navy. They were uh, targeted to be given special training. And he said there was a farm outside of Medford, Oregon, about 20 miles outside of the town. And he said a bus would take the children there and they'd be taken to a farm environment and there would be bleachers set up. And he said that uh, visitors would come out, men and women wearing their one piece outfits, and they would project from their third eye area, uh, uh, the solar warden craft that they would be operating at some point in the future. And Bill said that the parents of these children, the fathers were in the Navy or the mothers and fathers may have been in the Navy together. They knew that their children were being chosen and being taught to be future members of Solar Warden and for operating off planet. Wow. That's Isn't amazing. that incredible? Yeah. You know, um, I, I just actually found out Carol Rosen lives in Medford here. Uh, really? She, uh, I'm working with a scientist that uh, Richard Miller, he's coming to my uh, conference. So I'm going to share with you here. Uh, some of the secret space program technology that I did receive from, Good. from uh, uh, my contact in 2011. I think I may yes. have even uh, initiated the word uh, secret space program. I don't know, but I started calling the secret space program. So this guy had given me um, some of these uh, images here. Uh, this is Mengele and then um, trying to get in here. So the Nazis, you know, they didn't uh they didn't just go away. So I got no. I got to find up here. So can you see the whole the whole secret space program? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So here here uh this is a group uh in Alaska, the scientists watching. This is called the Aurora. It's a smaller craft as it's jumping uh uh from to hyperspace. Here is the TR3B. Uh there's a TR3B. Uh, that that's not a real spaceship. This is uh, a picture on the backside of the moon, uh, allegedly of the astronauts 
uh, looking at it. When they landed, they did put Stanley Kubrick's video of the moon. This is uh, Buzz Aldrin on the moon. I, I believe this photograph was taken. And you can see they're kind of outlined and they do kind of look like William Tompkins uh, uh, shape shifts. This is kind yes. of like a sound frequency device. Um, this is a very high, powerful technology. He told me a little bit about what each of these were. This is a government uh, crash landing of a government disc. And here, the Navy, everyone goes there to get it. So yes. There's a lot of stuff. They keep this under top secret uh, wraps here. So this is a, the secret space program. This is a, another craft that flies out to the secret space program. They don't need rockets to go out there, folks. No, they don't. They don't. So these are the advanced technologies here. This is the HARP program. These are portals that they're opening up with the giant uh, HARP program. This is uh, in the area above Alaska. So um, this is some of the laser technology. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. The, this is some of the very, very high technology. This is one of the very intelligent uh, scientists working in these programs. Uh, these very, very advanced technologies of you know, high technology, man-made crystals. This is a crash of what's called the MHD. Um, they decided they could not uh, recover. The disc is over here. They managed to recover that. You can see on the right. But this, they had to blow up in the water. I heard the Russians were on the way there too. This is the Philadelphia experiment going into uh, invisibility. And there it, it, it is going back now. When they have a crash, they go up there like this. These guys were creating landing pads. These are all guys sworn to secrecy. And you're going to get to see, this is a, another crash of that disc, not underwater, but this is, a, uh, this is a hyperspace drive. And there are some of the scientists taking pictures down below in one of those craft. So they're looking at it. What can we do? Well, we everyone's coming to protect and, and to fight anyone who dares to try and take it. There you can see a little, the little hole into the center of the earth, why no planes can fly over the North Pole. And here yep. is that same disc leaving an area called S4, uh, not too far from uh, a Groom Lake. This is yes. in Los Angeles, California. This is in the labs in Pasadena and JPL. This is a, a type of... Uh, weather modification technology. This is beneath Antarctica in an area that they went down there. One of the guys told me he had been down there and he think he, he saw a base that had been nuked. He think Eisenhower had nuked the Nazis down there. But um, th this is some of the exotic technology uh, that's going on. We can see tremendous ionization clouds. This may be weather control. Here again, the scientists in Alaska looking at the heart program uh, creating these tremendous things. So what is the HARP program, folks? You're going to see here, um, this is one of the military flying through a, a storm. There's one of the Aurora craft. This is the inside of that craft that you showed me, the interior. This is called the USS Los Angeles. It's a government craft. This is a government uh, HARP station. Allegedly, yep. this is a genuine government craft, too. Uh, utilizing some sort of vortex. So this is ground-based. I'll just take you through it real quick here. Very advanced technology. Uh, scientists sworn to secrecy. And These were all given to you, Rob? The, these were all given to you? These were given to me by a guy in 2011. I okay. had, a, I had a, a dose of, um, of stuff taking place back then when... Um, are you, are you still in contact with him? Are you still in contact with him? Uh, I could be. Uh, he doesn't. Okay. He doesn't want contact. So okay. I want. I want to show you. So here's the inside of that craft that you saw, right? That that's the interior drive, uh, interior drive of the craft. Here is a government in Iraq where they were. They're they're producing some frequencies that would get all the people to uh, run out of the bunkers in fear. Yeah, so I'm going to show you. Here's a harp program. Okay, so here's a big field of harp, folks. What is this? Angels don't play that harp. Well, right. um, let's let's take a look at the interior. These are the guys that work on that harp program and manipulating the weather. 
And what this what this area here is, and I'm going to see if I can find it for you. We got a nice one of the close up pictures. Uh, this area is filled with a bunch of pyramids. So I'll take you through. This is these, some of these are fun. This is a very high technology aspect of the secret space program. Um, you see these. Here's some of that uh, ferrous electromagnetic smart metal. Um, here's one of the crashes. I think maybe that other one that we saw with the same guys. This is the exterior. The core was ejected. And uh, this is the interior, not of that ship, but this is the picture that you had, Frank, or Renz. Yes, that's right. Yep, yep. This here is the harp thing. And you see a little little vortex. This is a sound, some sort of sound frequency that they're yes. utilizing when they're doing these nasty deeds to the atmosphere. So um, the guy told me when he works on these things, they have to be very careful and they only, they have to only use certain metal. They can't have one little dent, one little anything anywhere, or it'll ruin the entire technology. They're very, very uh, careful with it. But you can see this is billions of dollars worth of metallurgy and science. Oh, yes, yes. The people that make them do not have... Um, anywhere so uh here is harp in action folks this is weather control this is portal opening these are demons to hell this is some serious power and it's destroying nature here's one of those beams shooting up from alaska and one of those one of those bases there yes and i wanted to just show you the the part that i was going to show was the, the actual pyramid part of it it's a a small thing anyway so you get the idea this is one of the guys that work on these technologies they call them the black monks yes secret space program because it's it has to do with consciousness and energy and all that stuff here's another one coming out of the government base this is yep. a, this is an emp government made emp weapon um and um you know, it's uh, a lot of stuff. Just th when Frank talks about technology, folks, I just wanted to uh, support him there and say, "Thank you, thank you." There it is. You know, Bill Tompkins told me that when he worked at the Douglas uh, Secret Think Tank in the early '50s, he said they did an evaluation of all the different types of propulsion that could be utilized, including ionic propulsion, uh, radioactive propulsion, nuclear uh, light propulsion sound propulsion and he said that they had found that there were uh two or three errors in maxwell's equations and when they discovered what the errors were he said it freed the door to anti-gravity and he said they had that in the middle 50s and i asked bob what about it? and he said yes he said they they found at least three equations that were erred in maxwell's equations and it did have the ability for uh, anti-gravity and Bill said the first seven solar warden groups he did designs for all used anti-gravity. He said the three that he was working on up until the time of his passing, he said we're using a new form that would be faster than light. And he asked me, what did I think it was? And I said, Bill, it's only one thing faster than light. It's thought. And he said, yep. He said the next three that they were building were all going to be thought propulsion. And he said they could go anywhere. He said with the existing technology, anti-gravity, he said they could go from Earth to the center of our Milky Way in 45 minutes. Wow. That's pretty fast still. That's pretty fast. Very fast. That's really great, amazing news. So uh, you're going to be coming to the Mount Shasta Summer Conference, aren't you, Frank? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun. Is Raymond Keller coming? Is uh, Dr. Ray coming? Of course he's coming. In fact, maybe we can <laughs> have you both picked up at the same time. We're going to have to coordinate that as we get moving forward. So, uh Tell me, but uh, I got a lot more information I'm going to be sharing with your with your uh, audience when I'm there because I'm being given information all the time. And it's like people want this information to come out. And the people who share it, they don't know the other people that I'm talking to. And it's so interesting because we're being given this information and they know that it needs to be dispersed. And I'm doing as much as I can. And I know you're doing as much as you can and not more on your end. You're doing a tremendous job, Frank. You're extremely... Uh balanced in the message of love and hope and uh and helping our fellow man and moving forward and uh you're always excited by the new 
the new information, the new technologies moving forward. And I think you and I from way back in the mid seventies, middle yes. late 70s there, we're coming to the fruition of our life's work. And uh, we're going to carry on the work of Gabriel Green and many of the other contactees of the fifties who stand before us. Of course, Howard, yeah. Men Howard Menger, uh, he told yes, me of when he built a spaceship for the government at Colorado Springs in 1950 folks. Yeah. 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 Went yep. out, they built a, a small one and then they set it down. They got inside, they built a man sized one. They had a room for six scientists. They built it up. They dropped it down and he took the plans home handcuffed to his wrist and uh, they never gave him anything they promised. When he went back to try and find the place, they had leveled it. He couldn't see and know where it was. He never got paid. And like anyone else, he was just used and abused and tossed away, and they never kept their promise to him. To no, have he, Rob, he built that device using uh, the technology existing in the 50s, and he was able to achieve those effects. Yeah, and, and that's how they found him. They found these exotic parts, and they tracked it that's down. Right. That's right. Electronics, and I go, that's Howard Menger, the light guy. He bought that from me back in three months ago, and they knocked on his door, and they said, did you make this? And he goes, yeah. yeah. And they said, uh, you're coming with us. So he went and built it for him and he wanted promises. And uh, so ladies and gentlemen, they've had the anti-gravity disc for sure since 1950. And yeah. uh, the, I've told that story, how they tried to steal it from him and give him a hypodermic needle. And he beat the crap out of the agents. Um, one guy came. He said out. the only thing he got out of it was they gave him a brand new Cadillac. That's the only thing he ever got. yippee ki -yay. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. yeah. He, he was a... a a great guy. And um, I don't know if I told you, I got to sit between him and Wendell Stevens in, uh, uh, on uh, January 11th, uh, 1991. And I um, um, got to ask questions the whole way to Egypt. It was amazing. Him and Wendell Stevens. Oh my God. I was in, I was in UFO research or hell. I, have <laughs> I bet. I bet. But you know, it's interesting. He never was, there was never a, tremendous ego with, with Howard Menger. And he appeared, I think, on Long Long John Nebel's show more than any other guest. And he would explain things so calmly and so rationally. And and again, without making himself seem special, that all this was a gift that we could all enjoy and, and yes. appreciate. And, and, you know, our star friends keep saying, Rob, we could all walk into the light hand in hand together. That's right. And uh, people have a choice. In their hearts, yeah. who are you going to choose? And if you're going to keep your head in the sand and deny what we're telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you may as well just skip this radio show forever and yeah. just go, back, go back to your own little world of denial. But for those of you- Everything's who, about choice. Someone, Everything's about choice, Rob. Everything's about choice. Yeah. You, you have a choice to come to this summer conference. It's still pretty darn cheap, folks. You can come right yeah. now for five days camping and four days of events for 450 it's going to go up. So if you're thinking of coming this summer, I would get your tickets now. Um, and um, thanks for having you, having to come on my show today, Frank. It's always an honor and a pleasure. And um, you can keep whatever you're going to be talking about to the last minute, whichever you're excited about. Um, and um, there's so much more to share. There's so much more to share. And again, you know, we're all students. I'm always anxious to learn. I don't, I don't know everything. I want to learn more. I want you to know learn everything. More. Come on. No, I don't know everything. Please. You know, we're all students, but it's always an honor to share with people that are open and receptive. And all I ask people to do is allow this information to come into your consciousness, put it on the back burner of your thinking. And perhaps at some point, it'll help you to easily and efficiently uh, link one concept to another where it'll make sense. Thank you so much, Frank. God bless you for coming on. And, uh, let, let's See you upstairs. Try to do it one more time uh, before the yes. conference. And yes. I'm glad we finally, after much travail and effort, uh, got this recording. And uh, yeah. is there anywhere you're going to be speaking in the future? You want to, our guests can join you. Are you doing anything? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to coordinate this uh, uh, documentary film producer to come on to uh, Jeff's program. Uh, we'll bring his name on is here. We're going to bring him on yes. here, too. I'll, I'll bring him on to you, too. And also that um, uh, these other individuals that are part they're coming to me telling me they're part of Solar Warden and are validating Tompkins technology. And these people never met Bill. They never spoke to him, but they said, Frank, we're living with his technology on a daily basis off planet. And they're so excited. It's, it's finally coming out. 
Yeah, I, ladies and gentlemen, William Thomas, you should get that book selected by extraterrestrials. When I talked to him and I told him my experience, he says, he said, you've been selected by extraterrestrials too. And I said, I guess I have. But I can <laughs> tell you, he had uh, extraterrestrial secretaries working with him telepathically, guiding him when the yes. bad guys, the, the, the Germans, the Nazis, and even the reptilians cloaked in human bodies were coming in and uh, railroading the secret space program towards very dark and nefarious uh, positions. And now we are taking it back. There are elements within those secret space program compartmentalized against each other uh, that are working directly and positively for the revelations of humanity. There is still, a, uh, there is still very much a dark secret space program that is being run by um some very bad people and they're soon to see the other side of life if they don't change. Yeah. It. I believe they're going to be neutralized. They'll be, they'll be, don't be marginalized and nothing's going to stop the dawn from coming. As, as Omnic Omnic said, she said, well, they have a new money system planned. She talks in her kind of Southern California earth draw. She, yeah. she goes, well, well, I, well, nothing's happening. When's the change is going to happen? She goes, Oh, it's Kim. And they told me, and, and they said, well, what happened if they don't? And and Omnic Omnic, the sweet little Venusian, said, they'll be annihilated. <laughs> and unfortunately, for those who go against God's plan at this point and are still trying to worship Satan and bring in the dark plans for humanity, you'll be annihilated. Now, that's not out of joy or happiness, but you can choose to be forgiven if you would yeah. stop doing what you're doing and uh, start working uh in support of life instead of against it. Sure. And thank you so much, uh, Frank Chile. If anyone wants to get you. You out you. of and they get a hold of you in any way, actually they can't. You're, everything's blocked from his phone to his text to his email. I can't even send him anything. I had to send Somebody a letter in the post to get this thing going. So, well, thank God we got a good intermediary. And you have to have her on to have her give you the, uh, the Nordic assimilation program that Sim has to gave her. It's unbelievable. It's beautiful. All right. God bless. Thank you so much. Uh, you. All right, Talk ladies. to you soon. See you okay. All right, uh, folks. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. And we'll see you soon, Frank.